You might have heard about several AI animation projects, such as OpenAI Sora, Kwaisho's Kling, Tencent's Mimic Motion, Tencent Music's MusePose, etc. What are the differences between these projects, and which one should I choose? In my opinion, aside from the ability to deploy locally, the main differences lie in the way they are used. When using Sora and Kling, it's similar to SVD, Single View Depth Estimation. You only need to, or rather, can only provide an idea or the first and last frames, with most of the content being created freely by the AI. It's difficult to intervene in the process. This method ensures better continuity between video frames, but the content it generates might deviate from your expectations, requiring some trial and error. On the other hand, projects like MusePose, Mimic Motion, or Animate Diff allow you to input a complete reference video, frame by frame image to image, or phase prompts, prompt travel, ensuring that the video aligns with your vision. However, due to the limitations of the training data, additional steps are needed to optimize video quality. At the current stage, I prefer the second approach because it allows me to be fully involved in the entire video creation process, rather than relying on luck to tell a story. Today, I will guide you through setting up what I consider to be the most stable, frame-controllable image-to-video solution, which combines the PIA, Personalized Image Animator, Model and Anime Diff. Remember, in the early Anime Diff tutorial series, I used the example of generating a video of a girl blinking but at that time, it was text-to-video. This time, we will challenge ourselves by inputting any image, even if it is not AI-generated, and make it blink. The open-source model PIA involved in this workflow is a text-to-video solution shared by OpenLab. Its advantage is excellent motion control, very faithful to text prompts. The provided examples show impressive results. However, today we are not content with simply using this feature we will integrate it into the anime diff workflow. This allows us to generate a fully controlled long video using phase prompts. First, we need to install or upgrade the Comfy UI Anime Diff Evolved plugin, ensuring that the version is from the commit after June 17th. You can upgrade via Comfy UI Manager, Git Pull, or by downloading the installation package. Next, download the PIA model, specifically the 1.67 GB PIA CKPT file, which I will provide the link for in the description. After downloading, place it in the comfy UI backslash custom underscore nodes backslash comfy UI anime diff evolved backslash models directory. With the environment set up, let's start building the workflow. First, we handle the input image part. Add the load image node and select the image you want to convert to a video. Then, add the image resize by longer side node and set the size to 512. The purpose of this node is to ensure that the input image is the right size for SD 1.5 processing. Next, add the get image size and empty latent image nodes to generate the corresponding latent. We'll start by generating 16 images, setting the batch size to 16. Organize the nodes and group them. Now, let's start adding the anime diff and PIA related nodes. First, start with the use evolved sampling node, connecting the model input to the load checkpoint node and select a checkpoint that matches the input image. If we use a realistic model to process anime characters, the results might be terrible. Then, connect M underscore models to the Apply Anime Diff PIA Model node. Select the PIA.CKPT we just downloaded as the motion model. And use the output from Resize for the input image. Connect V to a load VAE node and choose the familiar 840,000 model. Add a PIA input node using the paper's preset values, which includes many preset values corresponding to different motion ranges. I chose the small motion one. Add context and sample settings nodes. Remembering to change the type to free noise. 
Group these nodes for easy viewing. Since we need to provide corresponding prompts for different time points in the video, we add prompt travel related nodes. In this example, I set the eyes to closed on the 8th frame. Here, it's 7 because the plugin starts counting from 0. Complete the input and output ports. Fill in the pretext shared by all frames. Add a K sampler node. And adjust its parameters. These are the usual choices. Pick a favorite seed and fix it. Lower the CFG to 7. Use DPMPP underscore 2M with Keras for the sampling method. And add a VAE decode node to convert the latent space back to an image. Use the video combine node to generate an MP4 video. Click Run. Speed up the process a bit. And you'll see that in the video, the girl successfully completes the blinking action according to our prompt. However, the image is slightly dimmer. This is caused by different reference values in each frame of the PIA, which I'll share how to relight later. Now, let's try making a longer video by increasing the number of image frames to 48. In the prompt travel node, we add some new actions, including turning the hair red and a second blink. Click run and speed up to see the results. We can see that the character successfully blinks in the first half of the video, but the blinking effect in the second half is less satisfactory. This is because the default PIA parameters may not fully match the actions we want in longer videos. To solve this, we can manually set the parameters. First, we add a batch value schedule node to assign different values to different frames. The closer the value is to 1, the closer the generated video is to the original image. If the values before and after remain unchanged, the video will have little movement. So, according to this idea, we can modify the value every 8 frames for the first 16 frames and every 16 frames for the subsequent frames, ensuring that the value oscillates between 0.8 and 0.9. This is a universal solution that works well for various video effects. Then, we add multi-val and PIA input nodes and connect them to the anime diff workflow. replacing the PIA input node that used the paper's preset values. We copy a video combine node for comparison with the previous results. Click Run and speed up the generation process. Comparing the videos, we can see that the result after parameter adjustment is more ideal, with the character successfully completing two natural and smooth blinks according to our prompt. During video generation, you may encounter one to two frames that completely break down. In my experience, this can usually be resolved by changing the sampling method. Let me show you the effects of different sampling methods. Copy the sampler node. Choose Euler with SGM underscore uniform. and use the image merge function to place the results of both samplers in the same video for comparison. Click Run. Both methods produce quite good results, and you can choose based on your preference. Additionally, Euler combined with Normal also works well. Previously, we mentioned a minor issue with PIA 
where the overall brightness of the image fluctuates as the oscillation values change during the character's blinking process. This effect is quite noticeable in the generated images from the code examples. However, in ComfyUI, we have several ways to mitigate or fix this problem. Today, I'll show you a simple method using IC light to readjust the brightness of the video. Start by adding the IC light conditioning node. And provide additional positive and negative prompts. The positive prompt is the type of lighting. So I'll simply use spotlight and the negative prompt includes basic quality prompts, worst quality, and bad quality. Make sure to connect the clip and V correctly. IC Light has multiple working modes, and we'll choose to use the video as the foreground. Note that you must first add an image batch to image list node to convert the format. Then use VAE encode to get the latent list before connecting it to the foreground port. Add a K sampler. and connect the input prompts. Then, add a load and apply IC light node. Select the FC model for the foreground mode and connect its left and right model ports to the main model and sampler we're using. Next, we need to create a brightness map. Add a solid mask node. ensuring that its width and height match the dimensions of the foreground image. Set the value to 0.6 so that it's not too bright. Convert the mask to an image, and that's it. Connect a preview image node to see the result and use VAE encode to pass the latent data to K-Sampler. Adjust the parameters in K-Sampler. Set the CFG to 2. Choose Euler with SGM underscore uniform for the sampling method, and set the denoise strength to 0.9. After VAE decode, Remember to use image list to batch to convert the format again. Then add video combine to merge the video. Keep the format as MP4. Click generate. Speed it up and check the result. The entire video's brightness has been unified, with none of the previous dimming issues. Comparing it to the original video, PIA's issue has been perfectly resolved. Of course, I only used the basic features of IC light here. You can explore different lighting settings or parameters to achieve even more impressive results. For detailed instructions, you can refer to this previous video of mine. Alright, that's it for today's video. I'll provide the workflow and related plugins and models in the video description. See you next time.